Hi there folks and welcome to Michael's 3D World. You're probably asking yourself, I've owned a 3D printer for a while now and what are some useful things I can do with it? What are some things that are, I don't know, practical? Let's just call them practical uses of things I could make. I've been banging my head against the wall for quite a while now coming up with different things. I've made clocks, put clock faces in them. I've made expandable swords, lightsabers, if you will. Grandkids love them. I also made some revolver and pistol holders that I put in a gun safe so you can line all your pistols up in a row. They're not stacked up on top of each other and you can keep them in a nice, neat fashion. So I had a guy at work say, hey, my wife has to take her cooler to work every day and she has to leave it in her car. And obviously it's a, you know, it's going to be in a hot car. So they've got one of these really super duper insulated ones that are, you know, uh, made like all the other coolers out there, like the Yetis and the other name brand, big, big expensive cooler things. Um, but what she wanted, his wife needed, was a way to keep all of the cold on the bottom, make the cooler a cooler, right? But when you have ice in there, if you're using ice every day, because your ice maker is making ice, you got free ice every day you can throw in there, or sort of free, and don't want the ice right smack dab up against the food, you know, keep it out of the water, moisture, or whatever is going to be created. So I thought, he says, you know, can you make some standoffs? Something that you can put the ice in the bottom, set these things down in the ice, and as the ice melts, it'll keep all the stuff from sitting in water. I'm like, yeah, that should be easy enough to design and create. So let's jump in. I'm going to take you right into uh, Fusion 360. We're going to draw something up, get some measurements here, draw something up. So I'm going to do a little drawing with you. And then we're going to go to the pre printer, 3D print it, and then see how it functions in here. And my printer's not big enough to print one big open, big piece in here. So I'm going to make two pieces that go in there and sit side by side so you can take Put your ice in there, set this stuff down in there, and as it melts or whatnot, it might settle down a little bit, but it'll keep the water away from the food products. That's a thought. Let's see how we can do. Let's get started on that project. So this cooler is, oh, it's not straight walled, but it's pretty darn straight walled. So we're gonna go in here and kind of measure things up. We're at 15 inches at the top. And I would estimate by looking, it's about 14 at the bottom. This way it's about eight and a half. At the bottom we'll call it seven and a half. So seven and a half by 14. Seven and a half by 14. That's what we're going to go with in inches. We'll convert that to millimeter when we draw it. Alrighty, let's just dive right in. And... I know it sounds, the voice and everything sounds much different when i um, got this headset on. The micro, the micro, the microphone on this is crazy sensitive. So I try to talk a little softer. So I sound like an NPR radio host. Uh, so let's go ahead and start this drawing by, now, like I've said before in, in other videos, is design intent. What are you trying to create? You want to have it formulated in your head. If you can't see me down here using hand signals in the right hand corner, lower right hand corner of your screen. And my dog is under my desk getting attention. Like, hey, buddy, how you doing? Yeah, daddy still cares for you, bud. All right. Can I can I do this video? Can I? You gonna let me draw? Such a sweetheart. His name's Mercury, of all things. If you follow my other channel, uh work on outboards and stuff. And uh yeah, this one's Mercury. Is a jet black dog. <laughs> All right. Uh, but yeah, I was, like I was saying, we we're talking about design intent. And, you know, you picture, you've got to picture it 3D in your head, what you're going for, what you're starting with, and what your end product is going to look somewhat like. So in this one, I've been thinking about, and, you know, for making this thing, it's going to be 177.8 millimeters by 190.5 millimeters. That was just my measurements I had that I converted to millimeters. Uh, obviously, I can't do the 14 inch width. So I'm going to, Cut that in half, and then cut that in half is the 177.8. So 
So we're going to start off picking a drawing surface. It doesn't matter here, front, back, sideways, left, right, upside down. It's just going to be a block, basically. So we're keeping this relatively simple. So I'm going to go over here and create rectangle, center rectangle. Oops, I clicked on the wrong thing. Dog on it. Escape. Do that again. Rectangle, center rectangle. And then we'll click the home spot here. And so, like I said, the width wise, um, we're going to do 177.8. And then I'm going to tab, hit the tab key and go over to the other one. It's going to be 190.5. I draw everything in millimeters just because it's easy. It's so easy. And that's all I'm going to create right here, right now. So I'm going to finish the sketch. I'm going to click on it. Then I'm going to click down here and rotate it so you can see this. I'm going to extrude it right here, extrude upwards. And I want to go 101 millimeters, which is about four inches tall. And this is how simple this is going to be because I want it structurally. I thought about making a plate surface with little, with little uh, pyramids coming off of it. Uh, I thought that would be, but I, got, I need something that's structurally strong and can sit there and go down into the ice. So if you pushed it down in there, it would wiggle down into place. Then I got to thinking, why not just make it um, hollow block? And so how thick do I want this? You know, I can do two millimeter. I can do three millimeter. I can do 23 millimeter. That's going to be way too. But then I can do, let's just do, you know, eighth inch should be plenty, which eighth inch loosely translated is like four millimeter, right? So we'll do a four millimeter. That should make it plenty strong. And as you can see, whoops, as you can see here, it's just going to be a box. So this is, this doesn't get any simpler than this. Whoop, I lost my shell. Boom, boom, four. And it's four millimeters all the way around now. So that should be plenty healthy enough. And we'll go, okay. Now I want to create a knife edge here so that it helps push down through the ice, gets rid of this blunt surface. So we're going to do a modifying chamfer. We're going to pick these lines right here. And then we're going to go, hmm, four edges, equidistance. Yeah, we'll do equidistance. We've selected the edges, the corner types of chamfer. You can do a miter, a blend. You know, so we're just going to pick chamfer for this one. And how many millimeters? Let's make it three of the four. See, what that's going to create is that nice thin edge there. Now, if you don't do equidistance, here's the other thing you can do, uh, distance angle. So now it's three millimeter at 45, but what if, just what if we made it 60? Maybe 120? Nope, the other wrong way, 30. That's pretty flat. I think I'm gonna go back, let's go to 60 maybe. Let's roll that around, take a look at what 60 looks like. So that makes a pretty strong edge there. I'm not unhappy with that. And what I'm going to do is I'll make two of these. I'll just print two of them. And we'll put some halfway decent infill so it has some good strength to it. But that'll be pretty durable because that's going to sit in the cooler like this with this surface up on top. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to lock. Let's just lock it in. So just that quickly, we made a box, a solid box that's easily 3D printed, right? Structure-wise, this is going to be pretty strong. It's not going to give. It's not going to break very easily. I think this will work out really well. Now, what I want to do is perforate the top side. And what I mean by perforate, I want to put a whole bunch of holes in this top surface here to let the coolness come up through and any moisture go down through. You know, just let's just let's just play around. This is where we... This is where we make it happen. So we're going to go back to our construction plane. I'm going to select this surface. I want to draw right on this surface. And here we're doing this. Now, if we want to, uh, we can do a pattern from the center out. I'm going to try it. I'm, I'm learning right here with you guys. I'm going to play around. So let's put some decent size holes here. Let's make them 20 millimeter. And we'll just do that. And I'll, I'm just going to go ahead and say finish sketch. And we're going to click that. I'm going to extrude it. I'm going to do negative four millimeter. We should have a hole. There we is. We have a hole. Now, the cool part about this hole is I can take and select that feature. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Let's just try that. 
uh, let's just select that feature like that. And then I want to do a create da -da -da -da, pattern, rectangular. And we've selected the object. we got one selected. Directions. We'll select direction. Uh, we can pick that and that. And let's see. Let's pick distance. Let's just, let's just put uh, 40 on there see what happens. See what that looks like? So that's touching. It's too close because I did it for you. Let's do uh, 50. 50 leaves a little bit of gap in between, right? Now here's the cool part. So we know 50... 50 looks like it'll work and give us plenty of strength there. So we'll go with that. Maybe 60? Or do it. Let's see if I did. I don't know. This is, where I, this is what I like about this is you can just play around with it. Uh, 60. Let's do 80. Ooh. Yeah. I'm digging the 80. Yeah. So now that we got a number that works, so we got 80, um, we can do another direction. So I'm going to do 4 here and 80 here. Look at that. And then I can do symmetric. And then extent spacing. Thinking out loud here, guys. I'm not sure. Let's see the one direction. Spacing extent. Hmm. So I like this direction like that. How do I bring this down to three? Whoops. Nope, still four. Let's change the distance. 80, 70, how does that look? I'm not unhappy with that, but am I completely happy with it? Are we going to have some strength here? That's the big question, right? Is this is this middle going to break in? Is this going to break easily or not? Let's just hit OK for now. Let's just see how things are looking. Because did I make that too holy? I'm going to go with that. I don't mind that at all. OK. So what I did there, we'll go back and look at this. Um, rectangular pattern that I created here. So this one ended up being 80 millimeters and a 7 pattern. And I did it in a symmetric way. And then when you go back and pick this angle, was it this one? Yeah. That was 7 and 80. This was 70 millimeter and I did 4 going this direction. Okay. So then what I did after that is I, I went to my top view here. I went to this. Well, let's just go here to bottom view. I'm sorry. Went here. And I did a selection like this. I just highlighted, did one of these numbers, and it selected all those circles, right? And then I was able to go and select create mirror, and I mirrored the pattern. And then I, so it's, now it's selecting 54 before it was only 26 because it's half. Then I selected the mirror plane, you know, of which I wanted it to be mirrored about. So, and then I ended up with this. So this I'm not unhappy with. This I'm actually pretty happy with. Now, one thing I wouldn't mind doing is softening up these edges. Maybe these edges, too. So let's let's just play around with some fillets here. So I'm going to come in here, and we're going to grab some fillets, and we're going to go this one here. And what's a 4-millimeter fillet look like? Looks pretty fragile. Yes or no? What do you guys think? Let's do a six. Eight. Yeah, I'm like an eight. Put 
So if I do an eight there, that way I can put a fillet on the outside and maintain some thickness through the corners. So let's just do another fillet here and here. Here and here. Let's see what that's going to look like. And uh, we'll do eight there as well, maybe. Yeah. Whoops. Not gonna hate. Don't you just hate it when you click the wrong button? Happens to me more times than I care to imagine or admit. All right. Select that one. That one. Trying to see what shows up here. So a little bit of that. Uh, Maybe eight's a little big. Starting to show my corners up there a little bit. I'm going to leave it. Makes it look more like a little knife. I will go with that. So then, I wouldn't mind putting a fillet up on this top edge. Now this is the surface I'm going to print. So if we put a two millimeter fillet on that, uh, let's go three. Yeah. Three there, hit OK. Now I don't want to. I don't want to. want to make the inside strength and you know add some fillet strength in there too. So I got that corner, that corner. This one, this one. Oops! Golly, I did it again. I hit escape. Got to keep my finger off that escape key. Just quick on the trigger with that. Just put a five millimeter in there. Well, it looks like it's going to work. I'm just going to run with that. I think that'll be something that would work just fine. Now, once you got what you want, I'm going to hit save. I'm going to, uh, let's just call it, it's going to be some miscellaneous. I think I have a miscellaneous file here, miscellaneous parts. Um, we'll call it a cooler riser. Now that it's saved, I can 3D print it. So if I come down here and hit 3D print, I can select the object, hit OK, and this will automatically trigger my Cura to uh, slicer to open up. And I'll drag that over here to this screen just to show it to you when it opens here. Here it is, imported. And this is going to be done on my CR10. Um, I think it would fit. Would it fit on my Ender? You could actually print this on the Ender 3. No problem. Maybe I'll do it on my Ender 3. Oh, wait. What about the CR? What about the Ender 5? Yeah, it actually fits on the Ender 5. I'm going to print it on the Ender 5. Because uh, I like the way it prints. So let's just, I don't know, just to kind of give you guys an idea of my settings, this is just a standard quality. Uh, fill gaps, walls everywhere. Infill density, 20%. We're going to go with that, see what that looks like. Um, 210 is what I print, my print temperature, 80 or 60 is my bed temperature. Print speed at 80 and 40. Not a skin. Shouldn't need any supports. Don't need a skirt. I'm going to call it none. Let's slice. Let's see how much just how much juice this is gonna take. 234 Gs, 234 grams, one day, zero hours and 38 minutes. So that's a pretty healthy print. That's a 24-hour print. Um, I'm gonna go for it right there. So we're gonna save this to the disk. Uh, we'll put it in the under five finals here, and uh, we'll just call this. Cooler riser. We'll save it right there. All right, as you can see here, I've got my camera on. We're going to be able to do a little recording on this. Uh, I think I got 
time lapse. Uh, time lapse mode will be turned on on Z change only. And then, uh, yeah, I think that's all I need on that. Save changes. We go back command and control here. We're going to go ahead and upload the. Uh, Where'd I put it? Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Coolerizer. There, that's been uploaded. All I gotta do is hit print. I've got my bed cleaned off. Um, I'm using the Wham Bam printing service here. As you can see, the red here that I have modifications on this. This Ender 5 is really solid. really does a solid job for me. Hopefully it doesn't make a liar out of me. So we're going to we're gonna turn the time lapse on. We're going to watch a little time lapse. Hopefully it turns out well. And we'll be back after that uh, live, not in NPR radio mode. And we'll go from there. I hope you guys enjoyed this so far. Maybe you've learned something. Yes, Fusion 360 is actually a really nice 3D creating software uh, you can get it uh, I would call it a reasonable price overall compared to other design software there out there this one here is uh, if you guys want I'll leave a, I can leave this uh, design and thingiverse you can scale it up and down you guys give me your comments and if it's if it's uh, if I get some comments that says yeah please put that in thingiverse I'll, I'll put it there and update the uh, links in the description of the video and let you know in the comments when I got it done. So until then, we're just going to let this thing rip. All right, we're back. As you saw, the 3D printer worked flawlessly. We did that twice. What do we have here? Whoa. What can I call these? Cooler buddies? Ah, I kind of like that. But yeah, there they are in all their glory. I had like a hunter green that I had in the printer, so that's what I went with. and. Uh, it's going to work well. The nice thing about these being PLA, you can probably print these in ABS as well, is they won't damage your plastic cooler, which is what you want. So we're going to go ahead and throw some ice in here and kind of see how, how it functions with the ice. Let's just bring you in closer and see. Ooh, I'm getting darker. Ooh, I'm getting lighter. What's going on? All right, so we got the ice in there. Let's see if they... The ice is wrapped to the bottom there. Yeah, it just wiggles right down in there. Yeah, it cuts down in your space, no doubt. But how much lunch are you taking would be the one question. And how long do you need it to preserve it? You know, in a 120 degree, 130 degree car, um, you want to slow down the process as much as possible and preserve what's inside. So I'm, I'm thinking this was a success. I'm going to turn it over to my guy at work and say, give it a, give it a whirl. What would work? What doesn't work? We'll go from there. Sounds good to me. This gives you an idea of what it looks like without the ice. Maybe these only need to be two inches tall. Maybe four inches is too much. I'll get some feedback and he'll let me know what worked and what didn't work and we'll go from there. But I'm pleased with how it looks. I think it would work great. The other cool thing, you know, this, if you had a bait container, ooh, this is something really, really cool, right? Uh, if this was your bait container, and you know how 
bait is, like worms and night crawlers and stuff like that, you don't want them sitting down in the water. You just want them in a cool spot. Now you can put the ice underneath, put them there. It keeps this area. It's, it's amazing. I put my hand in here after having that ice in here. And it uh, still feels cool in there. Well, because it's a cooler. Makes sense, don't it? Cool. I like it. We'll go from there. There you have it, folks. That's what I'm going to call these the cooler buddies. And uh, I, th I like them. I think they'll work pretty good. I think I'm uh, going to have to look at my bait container that I have that I use when I go fishing, my cooler. And I think this is a great idea to put this lining. Maybe it's only an inch thick in the bait con container, but the cool part is you can put ice in there and you'll never have to worry about your bait <laughs> or in this case, food sitting in water. You know, Tupperware containers, they're pretty watertight. Ziploc bags, pretty watertight. But when they're right next to the ice or laying in the water, it just does something to the food that doesn't make it taste as good as it did when you made it right on the kitchen counter before you went to work. Uh, so hope this inspires you, uh, gives you some ideas on some projects you can do for yourself, uh, some other applications for 3D printing besides printing figurines and you know swords and stuff like that you know there again throw me some ideas if you've got if you've had some good luck with some everyday uses for your 3d printed objects that help improve your life <laughs> improve uh your world a little bit and make it just a little funner to be in so don't forget to like and subscribe folks uh this has been Michael's 3D World. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something with, with me today. I learn something every time I try to do a video. And uh, so that's why I enjoy it. You guys get out there and have some fun. And remember, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. And I'll see you on the next video. Have a good one.